Welcome to the Evo India podcast. It's the end of the year, which means it is award season. This is the time of the year where all of us publications we give out our awards for the best cars over the last Not year. Not Evo. Evo doesn't have a car of the year. We have the global car of the year, the Ecoty, which is our year starting January 2024 issue. 24. 24. <laughs> so watch out for that. The Ecoty, it yep. is a unbelievable story. and it's got my favorite car in it and for a change that favorite car is also winning something but anyway i don't want to spoil <laughs> that for you what we're talking about are the best cars launched in india this year yeah. in 2023 this is the evo india podcast i am sirish chandran editor of evo india and i have with me in the studio atish mishra assistant editor of evo india so atish You want to list down quickly the cars that yes. we're going to be talking about? Yes. There's a number of cars. I'm going to list out the top 8 from Icoty because at the end of the day Icoty is like the Oscars of the automotive awards. Uh we've got a very diverse jury from many publications across the country and we've whittled the cars launched over the year down to the top 8 and those cars well are being considered for the Indian Car of the Year 2024. So, I just want to make a point that we aren't really talking about the Icoty in this podcast though later on in this podcast we will talk a bit about the Icoty and what makes it so important and also so unbiased it is a very very relevant award if you're looking for the best car that has been launched in india so we will talk about that towards the end but in this podcast we're going to talk about what we at evo india think are the stand out cars and that's why it's not just the brand new cars but also the facelifts that we will be talking about and i'll tell you later on why the facelifts aren't part of the icoty so atish let's run through all the cars we will talk about yes so toyota innova high cross Hyundai Verna, Maruti Suzuki Fronx, MG Comet, Maruti Suzuki Jimny, Hyundai Exter, Honda Elevate, Citroen C3 Aircross. We'll also talk about the Invicto and why it's not part of the Icoty. Yes, um, the C the EC3, the mm -hmm. Citroen EC3, the XUV4 Double O, Atto 3. So those are the contenders this year. Those are the cars that have been launched between 1st of December 2022. and 30th of november 2023 those are the that's the the window the that off, yeah. yeah so that's the cut off for the icoty icoty includes cars launched in the 12 month period that's the window from the 1st of december to the 30th of november and that's why the innova high cross wasn't included in last year's icoty and it is part of the icoty yeah. this year so when we put up the content on social media from the jury round that was held at the BIC many people questioned why the Innova High Cross was in this year's jury and that's the reason so we'll start off with the Innova High yeah. Cross yeah aldish you want to start off with your impressions on that yes the Innova High Cross i i had gone for the first drives if you remember yes and i was blown away by it because i mean we all know what the Innova was right the baseline Innova Krista it was the standard for a comfortable back seat in an of relatively affordable range i mean the innova has increased in price a lot over the last few years but uh, that back seat was a great back seat you know it was comfortable it had space you had room the ride quality was good uh, it was robust it would take you everywhere never break down so it was always great and the high cross had a huge challenge to follow in those footsteps but it i think on every measurable in every measurable way it is better except for the reliability because we don't know that yet yeah, we will it's only now a year yeah. and we haven't heard anything anybody yeah. complaining about it and we know of a lot of people who've bought both the high cross as yeah. well as its twin the invicto yeah. so <laughs> none of them have complained all of them yeah. have been super happy especially those who've bought the hybrid they love the fuel efficiency yeah. now it took me i think 4 months to get my hands on a high cross after you did the first drives yeah. because just Toyota did not send it to us <laughs> eventually i think around april they sent it to us and that was the weekend that we went the entire evo india team we did came to kolapo to the mohite yeah, karting academy yeah, where we so had a team day a team weekend so we had seven people in the high cross i was driving it the high cross did not struggle for power it delivered excellent fuel economy the ride comfort on the highways was brilliant it handled well it was refined yeah. the music system was a step up 
on the Krista music system is something that I really focus on in all the cars <laughs> because you spend so much of time yeah. in them that that's an important part that huge sunroof it really opens up the cabin even more and you will be surprised because the high cross is not that much bigger than yeah. the Krista but being a monocoque that enables Toyota and also front wheel drive not rear wheel drive so that enables Toyota to have that flat floor so much more interior space excellent packaging on all fronts honestly that high cross yeah. is a big step up now i've met a lot of people who said no 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 we want the krista we want the diesel engine and you know want a proper ladder frame and to all of them i say just spend some time with the high cross and you will fall in love with it later on we had the invicto on yeah. test in pune and we had it for a reasonable amount of time more than a month i sat in the back i sat in the front I loved absolutely loved being chauffeured around Pune in the Invicto. It is perfect. Yeah, if you, when you, you think about what the Innova is supposed to do, it's supposed to ferry people in comfort. True. You know, that's its one job. It's not like a an SUV which is supposed to do multiple things. But it handles. So yeah, it on can. the highway, yeah. you can push it. So Kambat ki gaad that we have on yeah. the way to Kolhapur, it you can throw it around. It grips well. Yeah. So in my opinion. If you need a two-car garage, mm -hmm. a Porsche 911, <laughs> and an Innova High Cross, absolutely, I think that's perfect. So Innova High Cross definitely one of my picks for the Indian Car of the Year. And why don't we have the Invicto in the IQT? The reason is that it is basically a clone of the High Cross. Not even a clone; it's a rebadged High yeah. Cross. And the reason why we don't have both is just that the votes will be split between the two. And the High Cross is a Toyota. The Invicto also is a Toyota. So, in all fairness, <laughs> we've Toyota got Maruti. the Innova. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have the Maruti Toyota. We have the Toyota Toyota in the IQT. So yep. that's the Innova High Cross. Then there's the Hyundai Verna, another strong contender this year. It's got a significant revamp over the last one. The whole style. There was a lot of debate around the styling. I remember you and I sitting exactly here and arguing about whether it's a good design or not. And Can I can I retract what I said because in the pictures it looked great but in the flesh I'm not fully convinced by it. I think it's too narrow. I think the Sonata it looks great that face but not on the Verna. But anyway, big changes. The styling was different, the interiors were different, ride and handling was improved and the engine, the new 1.5 turbo. But more than anything else, the reason why my votes for the Verna are higher yeah. this year is because of that five star crash safety rating yes hyundai finally have listened to all of us including us in this very same studio screaming about the <laughs> lack of crash ratings in hyundai's and maruti's in all of them they've really listened to us yeah. so all the noise that we've been making has borne fruit so the moral of the story is that keep making noise eventually yes. somebody is going to hear you they are going to listen to you they will push back a lot they will fight you they will argue they will say that no you're biased and yeah wo and all of that but eventually they have to pay attention and they read the comment sections we and they the, read the comments we sections we were in the office and they were telling us they were reading comments about stuff that we'd posted and yes. and they actually pay attention to what you guys are thinking you know you, you might think that oh we post something and that's it no they read the comments they want to know what y'all are thinking so keep engaging because yeah, keep it's firing really away in the comments and full props to hyundai yeah. for listening to us and giving the verna full five stars in terms of crash rating so yeah. the strength of the vertus and the slavia their five star global ncap rating the verna now matches them of course the slavia and the vertus are a little more enthusiastic to drive yes but we did a drag race yeah. and we'll put that link somewhere out here we did a drag race with the manual verna versus the manual slavia slash vertus and Which Verna one? Won. The Verna one. With Verna. both of us swapping drivers, you know, it wasn't just Sirish driving and and beating me because he's a better driver, something like that. We swapped drivers, and I thrashed you. <laughs> yeah, the the Verna <laughs> one, hands down. The Verna DCT, not as quick. Yeah. But the Verna with the manual gearbox, man, that engine is yeah. quick. It's light. It's not as heavy as the Virtus and Slavia, and it uses it all to its advantage. So all that we talk about in terms of performance, you know. some people do tell us that no you guys keep talking about performance performance where are the roads kisko chahiye performance and all of that but heck 
Verna has got more power than the Virtus and the Slavia, and the reason for that is that people want it. Yeah. Hyundai will not deliver power if there are no customers for it, if there are no takers for it. So the Verna, it's fast and it is safe. In terms of styling, okay, but again, styling is a personal preference, so let's yeah. not jump into that. But Verna, again, a strong contender. The Maruti Suzuki Fronx is up next. Okay, so now with the Fronx, and I went to Goa for the first drives. Yeah. I was surprised by how good it was. That gets the booster jet engine. Now, Maruti is inherently are they have that Swift DNA mm -hmm. in all that hard tech platform business. That Swift DNA is there, but it is subdued to varying degrees. With the Fronks, it comes alive because it finally has power. That booster jet engine, the one liter booster jet engine, which is now assembled in India, and that's why the Fronx is not frightfully expensive. Yes. Even though it has got a turbo petrol engine, the Fronx really is fun to drive. And Maruti, uncharacteristically, they laid out an autocross track for us also <laughs> to sample and the Fronx on. Off -roading, they were doing, check, doing articulation. Yeah, they were doing off roading also yeah. with it, which I thought was ridiculous because nobody is really going to yeah. use the Fronx to go off roading. But I think that's Maruti pu pushing the agenda of it being an SUV, which it's not. Yeah, but it uh, is not an SUV, though now that SUV term yeah. has been so horribly perverted. Uh, yeah, I want to <laughs> use another word, but I can't use that yeah. word. But SUVs, Maruti has one SUV and that's the Jimny. Yeah. Okay, let's think. But okay. To be fair, the, the Grand Vitara 4x4, you can. Yeah, yeah, the Grand Vitara yeah. all-wheel drive. My bad. You, you the Grand Vitara all-wheel drive also. But anyway, let's not wade into that. That's a whole other yeah. debate. The Fronks, very good and solid fun to drive. If Maruti ever wants to revive Maruti Suzuki Motorsport, the Fronks mm. definitely should be the car Lots to do it with. Yeah. It has got good ground clearance, good ride, good handling. The steering has been sorted out. Remember the earlier Bellino that didn't even self-center properly? But with the Bellino facelift, they've yes. sorted that out and that is improved on the Fronks. I think it also looks quite good. It looks pretty cool. I like the different. fact that they've they've taken a little bit of that Grand Vitara styling and put it into a small car. You know, the headlights yes. and stuff yeah. like that. It for looks, a change, there yeah. is some family connection. Yeah, for a change. Yeah. For a change. But those are the only two that have they that did, family they connection. Did, they did say, I remember when the Bellino launched, that they're going to have that three LED feature across their range okay. coming through across all the cars. The Jimny obviously doesn't have it, but uh, I think it's something we're going to see a lot more of now. Yeah, so yeah. Fronx, very good effort from Maruti. But, 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 the Fronx is not part of the Ico team. Yes. Do you want to <laughs> <laughs> elaborate on the reason for it? So, at the Ico team, the rules state that the cars need to make it for the jury round. And uh, Maruti didn't send a Fronx to the jury round because they didn't want the votes being split between the Jimny and the Fronx. Which I don't think makes too much sense because they're two different segments of cars. So you'd vote for them for very different reasons. In fact, I would think that the Fronx would take away votes from the likes of their Exter. Yeah. And not really the Jimny. So I think that was being a little... Or, trying to, or maybe trying to play it. I yeah. don't know what, but I, I don't think that was smart. But anyway, the yeah. Fronx... Unfortunately, gets zero votes in the ICOT no, because even, it wasn't yeah, there. Yeah. So we didn't consider it for the ICOT. So uh, that was doing injustice to what is a good car. Now we SUV, come to like the calls it. MG Comet. Okay, the MG Comet. Now, very interesting car. It is the modern day Reva. The Reva was probably way too ahead of its times. Not only the fact that nobody in India wanted an electric car, but the electric technology, the battery technology was, was too compromised and very primitive yeah. back then. That still had like proper lead acid batteries or something. I, so, I was in but, school back when it launched. Yeah, but yeah. I, I drove the Reva. I tested it when it first came out. I thought Chetan Maini was a visionary in terms of bringing electric mobility to India. For a while, the Reva was the best-selling electric car in the world. Oh, really? Because they used to export it to the UK as the g -Wiz, which obviously a lot of you would have watched the Top Gear episodes on that. Mm -hmm. But it was the best-selling electric car in the world for some time. Wow. I think we should do that Gone But Not Forgotten episode Definitely, on the Reva. 100%. We'll do that. And okay? we'll bring a comment for... for and, and we'll bring the comment for perspective. Yeah. Okay, so you guys just hammer away in the comments <laughs> and keep reminding us to do that Gone But Not Forgotten on the Reva. So the comment, honestly, is the modern day equivalent. And I mean that with all... With no negativity. With only positive intent. Because what do our cities want. They want smaller cars that will take less space on the road. Yeah. Smaller cars that can occupy less parking space so you free up more space. 
zero emissions, zero noise, easy to drive, good visibility, easy to maneuver. Nice. The Comet has yeah. everything. Absolutely. And once you get into the back, which is not too difficult also to get into the back, you can see it for because the packaging actually is very good. The skateboard platform, wheels pushed out to the end. You've actually got a lot of space on the inside. Rear wheel drive. <laughs> <laughs> it is rear wheel drive. Yeah. Um, I think some of our colleagues try to do sideways business with it, but I think that's pushing it. Yeah. You go sideways with cars that deserve to be thrown sideways, not with everything else. It is also very tall. I'd be too scared to flip it over. Yeah, <laughs> very tall, narrow wheels, yeah. short wheelbase, short track. You're asking for trouble if you do those things. The interiors of the Comet, that very big nice. screen... Uh, Actually, Mercedes Benz like, yeah. You Mercedes, look at the screens. Yes, there's those yes. twin screens, which is exactly what Mercs do. Yeah. You know, you have nothing to complain about. Visibility, it. excellent. Honestly, like Adesh said, nothing to complain about except for the pricing being on the yeah. higher side. You know, that pricing should have undercut something like the Tiago EV yeah. or at least on par with mm. the Tiago EV. The Tiago EV is more of a proper car. The Comet is a city car. Yeah. End of story. We did you know, a comparison. We did a comparison, and, yes. And, and we did give it eventually to the Tiago EV, A, because of the price, and B, because the, the Tiago is more versatile. You know, I'd say in if as a pure city car, the MG Comet definitely mm. is the better choice because of the compact footprint, because it's tiny and you can squeeze it into gaps that only rickshaws would squeeze mm. into, mm. stuff like that. But uh, when you put it into the perspective of the Tiago EV, the Tiago EV is more comfortable. It feels more car-like. It's nicer to drive. If you like driving, yep. if you enjoy spending time behind the wheel, even in the city, the Tiago is a nicer place to be. You know, and and also the fast charging. It does not. Also, I actually missed out. Yeah. So, Atish, that's a yeah. good point. The fast charging, the t uh, the Comet does not get fast yeah. charging. So, whatever you do, no matter what you plug it into, it will charge at its own pace. Exactly. And the second thing is that the ride quality, while okay, it doesn't feel as robust to tackle our Indian it's roads. small wheels, right? It's, it's small wheels and yeah. also the setup. This has been developed for markets like, say, China, where the yeah. roads are universally very good. All the city roads in China are excellent. That is when we went to China <laughs> pre-COVID. We haven't gone there since then. But in our cities, look at our roads. Yeah. Our, our highways are much better than our city roads. Our highway networks are becoming really good over the years, but our city roads are becoming worse. Much worse. Much worse. So you need an even more robust car for <laughs> the city than you need for the highway. Strange, but our country really throws these contradictions like yeah. uh, like Chennai throws it out contradictions. Absolutely. So that's why in the city on bad roads, the Comet does suffer a bit. But pricing, I think, is the key drawback in that car. Now we come to the fun one. Maruti Suzuki Jimny. The Jimny. The yes. Jimny. <laughs> all those hashtags, bring the Jimny, save the Jimny, India for Jimny, all of that. <laughs> uh, I, so going back, I think five years when the Jimny was first shown, yeah. we had gone to Bangalore for the Sears facelift drives. And I met Raman San at the lobby of the Taj at the airport. This is CB Raman, who's the CTO at Maruti Suzuki. Yeah, so I met Raman San at the lobby. And the first thing I asked him, like, Jimny Kablario. <laughs> and he looked at me and said that, will it do 10,000? I don't know, 5,000 or 10,000? And I said, no chance, man. How is it going to do 5,000? He yeah. said, why bother also? Because honestly, for Maruti, if something doesn't do 5,000 units a month... It's all about the numbers for them. No? Yeah. yeah. Also, everything sells at Maruti. Yeah. So something that will not do 5,000 units a month is like, why even bother? Mm. Other companies that do 2,000, 2,500, they, they make a song and dance of it. Maruti 5,000 is like, mm, we need to push it. Yeah. 10,000 is like a decent number for any Maruti. Yeah. The Jimny will never do that. But the Jimny is that that enthusiast car, that hero car, that car that makes us say, yeah, Maruti Suzuki, go to an XI showroom and yeah. go check that out. People might go to see a Bellino. They look at the Jimny. The kids will say, look at the Jimny and say, Papa, Papa, we want the Jimny. And, and that bright green is just that, such a happy car. It's brilliant. Yeah. Honestly, it's brilliant. And finally, Maruti listened to us. Of course, they made us wait until they stretched out the yeah. wheelbase and made the five-door, which everybody said, no, no, man, we want the three-door. But after driving the five-door and seeing how small it is even <laughs> with the yeah. five-door, I think Maruti yeah. did a good thing by making us wait for the five-door. Because the, fi the three-door would have struggled to sell. 100%. And the five-door also gives us something different compared mm. to what was already in the market, which mm. is the Thar. Yes. You know, so you get more practicality, you get more space, you get a proper rear bench, which is usable. Yes. You get, okay, four four seats, but uh, 
it's more practical yep yeah, my mother yeah. okay she can climb into a chimney no problem she struggles in a th- actually she won't bother also getting into the thar <laughs> jumping onto that foot rest and then climbing in yeah, I mean, but the chimney is like you're getting into the any other SUV. you you struggle yeah. a little bit more for the high cross yeah. than the chimney <laughs> The Jimny yeah. is so nice. The ride comfort is so good. It's so small that in the city you can follow a rickshaw, yeah. and where the rickshaw goes, the Jimny also follows. Yeah. And the Jimny, the rickshaw will jump over all these you no know, bad roads and all that. Jimny will just go through it. Yeah. We did a Thar versus Jimny comparison test. I was following the Thar in the Jimny. The Thar, you no know, bouncing about on Heavy, those bad right? patches. Heavy, right? So it's got little stiffer suspension. Yeah. And Whereas you could see the Thar bouncing around. The Jimny, nothing. It felt like you were not doing anything. Yeah. That ride quality is phenomenal. I remember that's what blew me away the first time I drove it. They launched it in that dry river bed, remember, where yes. we had the first drives. And it was very interesting how they did it. They had obstacles where you could go and drive and shoot the car, but the rest of it was like a free zone. It was almost like a video game where you had like a free zone mm. to just go and roam. And it was a river bed. It was a proper rocky trail. And this thing was just beautiful over it. It yeah. just rode so beautifully. Yeah. And and that instant, I was like, man, they've got something right here. And and that's why i realized you know th- that saying that add lightness mm. it makes everything better mm. it just worked yeah. in the jimny yeah. in fact just on another note maruti suzuki actually did two of the nicest car launches last year the jimny launch we drove our hearts out yeah. and drove it over all kinds of terrain yeah. we really drove our hearts out they let us do whatever we wanted to do with it Yeah. They the just said take the car and go have fun. The Fronx also very interesting yeah. drives. Yeah, so that you went for. Yeah, yeah. so Maruti really did some very nice drives yeah. also last yeah. year. But coming back to the Jimny, it's not without its faults. Yes. The power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much lightness you add, yeah. you still need BHP. Yes. And the power is okay in the city, you're not going to struggle. Yeah. But out on the highway, yeah, the power It's not not enough. Do you think they should put the 1.0 booster jet? One hundred and ten percent. Bring. I'll get the this thing also. Those small car cuts. excess duty brakes. Yeah. So the one liter booster jet compared to what we have right now might might be the same price. Yeah. Using those excess duty yeah. brakes, but it will make a much more entertaining car. Okay, may not with the turbo lag and all. I don't know how good it will be for off road use, but uh, why the Thar also has a turbo petrol engine? It's no problem. problem. Yeah. Hey, do a little bit. tweaking to the mapping yeah. and it can be done of course it's not a simple matter of pulling out the fronx engine and dumping Correct. into it okay gearing will have to be changed not only that transverse yeah. longitudinal yes so that also rear wheel drive mm-hmm. front wheel drive location yeah. of the gearbox all of that so it's a significant amount of reengineering yeah but maruti can do it yeah yeah they made the whole brazan india yeah exactly yeah. so maruti can do it yeah. and i can't wait for a jimny with a booster jet engine so that's one yeah. power manual gearbox mm. the most un suzuki like manual gearbox i have ever experienced yeah. and i'm somebody who grew up with the 800 and the zen yeah those had brilliant gearboxes the zen hot nice sticking through butter you don't have to go that far back you look at current man- everything manuals. maruti does, does not make bad yeah. manual gearboxes yeah. except for the jimny so that's why even though this has got only the four speed automatic not the modern six speed automatic the jimny manual gearbox i would honestly recommend to anybody buy the automatic okay stick yeah. with that and even for off roading the automatic works really well yeah. so those are the two main drawbacks you could say that it looks very small but i think that's fine i have no problem with it but obviously everybody has their yeah. personal reactions to it and the third problem which is pricing pricing <laughs> pricing yeah maruti were too ambitious i i see no reason why it should have been priced there mm-hmm. where it was of course the the thar with the rear wheel drive just yeah. under 10 lakh rupees that kind of uh, muddied the jimny party yeah uh, but obviously that is mahindra being smart yeah they timed it they waited 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 and then they pressed the button and say okay rear wheel drive thar and then everybody went rear wheel drive thar <laughs> white color thar white color thar <laughs> and the jimny on pricing yeah. that really took a hit so much so that maruti uncharacteristically have launched the thunder edition yeah. and Within the thunder thun- europe has launched yeah 6 months of its yeah. launch they've got the thunder edition and the thunder edition is the same current jimny at the dealer they will give you a box with stickers they will put it on for you or you can take the box home and not have your stickered jimny yeah. and, and a 2 lakh a 2 lakh price drop there are these people on instagram crying about how they've been robbed by maruti because of the 
the the yeah, see manufacturers do that they do yeah. price corrections they do discounts they do year end stock clearing all of that is there uh, you will be well you will be upset yeah. you will not be uh, i wouldn't say that you're wrong in being upset but uh, that's that's life that's yeah. business right but so, the point is if you want a jimny go get one now before 31st of december because i know for a fact that they're going to raise prices I got two and a half lakh rupees off. Uh, Atish's mother is looking for a small car. She's, she's refused the Jimny. She's uh, <laughs> so in the comments you can also address dear Atish's mother. <laughs> this is the reason why you should buy a Jimny over an Iten. I've tried everything. She's not listening to me. <laughs> What sort of journalist are you, man, Atish? It's not working. She wants a <laughs> she wants a small automatic car. I can't do anything. So the Jimny hot favorite here Absolutely, at Evo. Yeah. It is the thrill of driving. It is the personification of the thrill of driving. It makes you happy. and like i keep saying life is too short to drive boring cars Absolutely. and now interesting cars like the jimny don't make you compromise on anything except so, power ex- okay <laughs> <laughs> next car hyundai extra okay so this is an example of how hyundai know what indian customers want yeah they had the casper in south korea mm-hmm. i was in south korea last month yeah. i saw plenty of caspers on the road and i think it looks brilliant hyundai had the option of bringing that to india they did not they went to the added effort of styling an all new car for india the extra is only in india yeah styling and yeah. engineering you're right yeah. styling and engineering why did they do that because they knew that okay even though there are guys like us who will love something like the casper yeah. but truth be told India is an SUV market. SUV. SUV. Yeah. Okay. In quotes. <laughs> yeah. SUV market. Yeah. And something like the Casper will only have a limited audience for maybe people like us who want a second why, car. Why? Why? Why do you say car. that? What's different between the Casper and the Exter? Because you've seen both cars. Okay. So one is the Exter is slightly bigger. Okay. And the more important thing is the Exter. It looks little SUV like. Yeah. Casper looks cute and cuddly, and those subwoofer type uh, DRLs yeah. up front, and you know it's lovable. Yeah. But does it Not have mean. aggression? Yeah. Uh, does it have that? No, get the mm. out of my way. Yeah. Nah, it doesn't have that, yeah. and uh, that's what everybody wants in India. Yeah. And that's why Hyundai went to the effort of. not only styling something that looks like an suv yeah. but they've taken that base platform which is the grand i10 platform yeah. no yeah. surprise even though hyundai never talk about platforms uh, it is the grand i10 platform the neos platform and they've strengthened it a bit mm. so at the first drive we found a trail we went hammering down the trail and it felt robust the neos would be out of depths over yeah. there but the exter did not feel out of depths but that said adish you had a point about the exter versus punch yes about the robustness yeah the punch i think feels more robust i mean we're mm. talking about robustness mm-hmm. when you go over a bad road the uh, the punch feels more grown up it feels like it has more dna linking to the nexon rather than to a tiago or an altros mm. you know and i think that's where the punch really shines mm. it feels grown up and that suv like suv ness yeah. that we're talking about the punch does it better so we took the punch to kolukumalai kolukumalai yeah. which is the highest peak in kerala in south india in fact and honestly i wouldn't recommend anybody <laughs> take a front wheel drive car up there yeah it's a 4x4 uh, only trail honestly it, yeah. i had to use every last ounce of whatever driving <laughs> skill i had to get it up there but it got up there yeah and mad respect it got up there and it got back down and then we drove it back to kochi <laughs> i i was blown away yeah. the the only reason why i brought it back down was because a tow truck will never get up there there's no way a tow truck can the ever only get other option is pushing it off the hill yeah so <laughs> i had to bring it down yeah. it was torture yeah. torture on driver torture on all of us torture on our nostrils with all the clutch smelling but <laughs> it made it down Yeah. And when we made it down, I got down on my hands and knees, and I like no praise the punch. It it's not built for something like that, but it did it, and uh, no full marks to it. Of course, the punch is not there in this yeah. year's Coty. No, it but the extra is year. a strong contender. I think it attacks extra, a very strong contender. It attacks a segment that's yeah. growing. And to all those who posted those smart ass comments on our social media, saying that obviously it will be the extra with the Coty. Ah, uh, hang on. Watch the podcast. Listen to the podcast. We will talk about that a little towards the end of this podcast. So, a little patience, please. Honda Elevate. 
okay when i first saw it and i went for the global unveil yeah. to delhi i thought that's it <laughs> i i like this is it because i was waiting for them to say and it's got the hybrid engine as an yeah. option and we did discuss okay, little, this on the podcast yeah, before as well yeah a little bit more expensive and all that okay fine but uh, hybrid no hybrid yeah no why why no hybrid what what is there to talk about on the elevate it's got the same honda city engine yeah. the same honda city transmission based on the same honda city platform the same it seats. is it, it is a honda city which looks like an suv yeah. the honda city in any case has an suv like ground clearance so it is a car or an suv for those that want a honda city that does not look like a honda city that looks like an suv yeah to be and fair it's a gr- it's a great suv yeah so there's a but yeah. and the but is it's a great suv to drive you know the honda city is is probably the sensible benchmark in the segment if you're not looking for a thrill driving car like the turbo verna or the slavia vertis the honda city is the best all rounder you know and the elevate just takes that and packages it differently and that's no bad thing because you've got that lovely engine yes. you've got really nice ride and handling i think that lightness that we were talking about you can feel it in the elevate as well really nice interiors thoughtfully mm. done mm. very minimal nothing fancy over the no, top it doesn't make you go wow yeah. but it does everything that you want exactly no panoramic sunroof yeah <laughs> but yeah. then just like the city it's sensible you know it does everything you need nice seats you know just everything and don't forget great fuel yeah. economy great fuel economy so yeah. even with the automatic with the cvt yeah. you get decent amount of performance you get yeah. excellent fuel economy of course when you step on it mm. that cvt rubber yeah. effect a is going to be there but 9 but times out of 10 you're going to drive it at 8 tenths yeah. and you're not going to hear the engine you're not going to hear the transmission yeah. you're not going to hear anything you'll hear more of people outside the car than any of the car mechanicals making any noise yeah. because it's so silent the powertrain refinement is par excellence it's got good space in the back also good space at the back it's a really sensible suv and it it sits i don't think it it moves the the bar up in any one place compared to the rest of the segment what the creta and the whole puncher rivals is doing but it makes a niche for itself in being really sensible it's not fussy it's just simple get in drive do your thing you know but does it change the it doesn't benchmarks does it move the game on does it, does it move not. the needle it doesn't and that is the problem yeah and it's Today, come too late look at where it's come so never late better late than never 100% okay that's yeah. fine but it needs to move the needle at least it if it that. had the hybrid power yes. train it would have been something yeah but here it's not moving the needle honda used to be the benchmark when i started off in automotive journalism mm. the honda city was what everybody aspired to the vtec was oh man the accord the crv yeah. these were desirable premium cars and then along the way honda just lost focus Honda wanted to become a mass market brand they lost focus on the top end models uh we used to say that Honda that badge was gold plated you stick a Honda badge on anything and it would sell yeah not anymore and that's just how they've treated and uh, held on to the brand in India so yeah. the elevate strong contender but doesn't move the game on sadly sadly there's another one from that segment though you know what it is mm. what come on Hey, uh, this don't play games, man. <laughs> Citroen C3 Aircross. Okay, now this is yeah. I can talk about the Aircross for an yeah. hour, so I'll try and keep this short. Okay, when I drove it, so when I saw it in pictures, I was not impressed. When I saw it at the first the that the global unveil in Delhi, I was there. I was shocked, honestly. <laughs> yeah, from the fact that it doesn't have a key fob, it's got a normal key. Yeah. not even a flip key a normal yeah. key it's got those exposed door locks the handles those multi 800 multi 800 type yeah. handles uh, the rear power window switches behind the handbrake yeah i, I was like man this is going to compete with a creta are yeah. you being serious i i can understand that and as it is going by the benchmarks with the citroen c3 that this is going to undercut the creta and all of that and they did that yeah they did undercut the creta quite significantly but still but it's not desirable people want something uh, people want to be happy yeah. about their car people want something that people will look at it and say are wah kya gaadi liya yeah. right but this this is the nano thing the I nano was, syndrome yeah. nobody wanted a 1 lakh rupee car they needed it 
but they didn't want the whole world to know that they spent only 1 lakh and they only had 1 lakh rupees to spend on a car yeah. that's the main reason why the nano failed yeah. in my humble opinion yeah. okay obviously the other reasons also but this is going back to that yeah. people and I think want today, something they it, want to move up in life in today's day and age i'm sure i would too buy a well spec sonnet over a Citroen C3 Aircross, despite the space it offers, despite yeah. whatever, despite that seven-seater yeah. uh, practicality. Yeah. Why the seven seats is for like if you want to squeeze in kids and all that. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, buy a Karens. Yeah. yeah. It's a desirable seven-seater seven seater at that makes price no, point. And it makes no bones about the fact that it is an MPV. Yeah. It's not trying to be an SUV, and it's all the better for it. Also, the Karens is the current reigning high quality. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, it makes no bones about it. It makes no apologies for being an MPV. Yeah, it is unashamedly an MPV, and all the better for it. Better ride comfort, better space utilization, everything. So this C3 Aircross, great pricing. Now, there's always a but. Yeah, I drove it finally. And I thought it was actually pretty good. Yeah. The ride was very good. Yeah. Better than the the uh, C3 that you're driving. Yes, on. the yeah. C3 also had good ride, but it didn't really move the needle so much in terms of ride. Mm-hmm. There are others like the Punch, for instance, yeah. or even the Nexon, the XUV 300. Yeah. They also ride very well. So the C3 didn't really move the needle. Yeah. But the C3 Aircross, again, confusing name, man. Yeah. It's a whole different What segment, C3, but it's C3. C3 Aircross. When give it another name, and there is another C3 in Europe. It's not like Indians don't travel. <laughs> Indians also travel, and you go to Europe and you see another C3, and here there's another C3. What's going on, man? Yeah, that, that's again. It's I thought very those days confusing. were over. Yeah, you know? it's, it's it's very confusing. So anyway, C3 Aircross. <laughs> What were they talking about? Yeah, right. the the ride yeah. very good. The engine because it's so light, the engine actually pulls quite well. Yeah, but no automatic gearbox. Yeah, I know we all read autocar. Autocar has been saying that there is an automatic gearbox coming yeah. for both the C3 <laughs> and the C3 Aircross. So obviously there must be an automatic gearbox yeah. somewhere along the way. Yeah. But it should be there at the start. Absolutely. How can you launch something without a uh, automatic gearbox? Sunroof. Okay, uh, it's not like I won't buy a car without a sunroof, right? A Porsche 911 does not have a sunroof. <laughs> I'll buy a 911. Yeah. But uh, no sunroof in that segment. In that segment, Where everybody wants a sunroof. Yeah. So yeah. it's a great product. Yeah. I am honestly saying it. it is a great product but you can't cheapen it you can't so obviously cheapen it renault did that with the quid yeah. they learned the lesson the kyger the nissan magnite there is no very obvious cost cutting over there yeah. you know it is a no cheap and basic car yeah. but you don't like are look at this look at this look yeah. at this look at this it's not with the c3 aircross half the game is spent or half the day is spent in pointing out are ye nahi hai wo nahi hai ye nahi hai ye nahi are sunroof nahi hai ye kya hai so that's uh, you know citroen are doing that huge injustice yeah. and they will do the same thing that renault did they will learn from this mistakes and two years down the line they will sort out all this yeah. obvious cost cutting but why make that mistake in the first place yeah. a smart man learns from his mistakes a smarter man learns from somebody else's somebody mistakes somebody else's mistakes yeah. and uh, well to cut this long story short These are the same guys who were at Renault, <laughs> and they're making the same Renault mistakes. So honestly, Citroen, I have nothing against you, mm. and I think the C3 Aircross is a fine product, but you can't be cutting corners yeah. visibly like this. Please, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you guys deserve better. Okay, we're through with our IQT contenders. Okay, now let's move on to some of the other cars that um, were launched in the last year but didn't make it to IQT. Okay, and the reason they did not make it to the IQT is because the IQT uh, shortlist it clearly says that it needs to be an all new car. Facelifts are not considered in the IQT. You need to have an all new car, and that's why these cars like the Safari, mm-hmm. the Harrier, they are not part of the IQT shortlist. But yeah. we will talk about them because they were not mere facelifts. Yeah, the facelift actually was a significant upgrade, not only in the way they looked. But also in the way they drove. So, Atish, let's start. So, let's start with the next one that came first. Um, significant updates. You have styling updates. Looks radically different from before. I think Martin Ularic is now imposing his reign on the styling of Tata Motors' cars. You've got updated interiors, which I think was much much needed. Uh, the new screens, the new screen on the wheel, the new center console. Obviously, some of the compromises of the older car. Purple seats. Purple seats. Some of the compromises of the old car remain because it is the older platform, and that's really what makes it apparent that this is a facelift and not a generational change. 
and you've got updates to the the, the drive trains yeah. yeah so you got so a dct gearbox you got the dct gearbox as well and it just moves the game so far ahead in that segment doesn't it so we did a comparison test yeah. brought all the compact suvs together yeah. and the nexon is still the best compact suv yeah. now there are pros and cons to that old platform the pro is that old platform was a five star global ncap rated platform obviously it was the earlier protocol yeah. not the new protocol but a very safe platform yeah so it has got safety yeah. we've always spoken about the rider handling being great on the nexon it continues in that vein we always did not like the amt gearbox <laughs> now you have the option of a dct gearbox yes so it adds some enthusiasm into the driving experience of the nexon and most importantly i keep saying that today cars there are no bad cars hmm. nobody makes a shit car yeah. anymore end of story so a lot of y'all also criticize us saying that are say something negative about it say something negative but nobody makes bad cars yeah and that's why styling plays an even more important role in a purchase decision and that's another aspect that you have to commend tata motors mm-hmm. that the organization is so strong that pratap bose left martin ularic took over and they continue to be a leader in terms of styling yeah that has not changed so what martin is doing with the styling of the new tatas i think they look fabulous I really do the new yeah. nexons look great the nexon ev especially with that full light bar looks really cool we will talk about the safari and the harrier also and what improvements have been done to the styling the interiors with the screen especially on the nexon ev the larger screen i think it's a shame that nexon combustion engine owners don't get the larger screen that they've been short changed uh shailesh chandra mm-hmm. the boss of tata motors he said that that is obviously to justify the price premium that the ice uh sorry that the ev has over the ice but i still think that somebody who wants a diesel suv the nexon's strength yeah. is the fact that it still has a diesel powertrain why should they get short changed and why should they get the smaller screen so i don't think that's right yeah and one thing that i don't like is the purple seats <laughs> but you don't have to spec it you got 10000 variants to choose from and Correct, one yeah. of them you will not have you can get confused like yeah. mad yeah. going through all those personas and whatever in that yeah. what happened to those days of lxi vxi end of story it was Dude. so simple right and uh, we have a launches page in the magazine where we usually put about four cars on a page for the next one we have to do one car because there were so many variants yeah exactly <laughs> you know yeah. it's it's ridiculous yeah, yeah. so auto cars uh, by prices pages at the end <laughs> I'm one sure page is next one. I'm <laughs> sure at least one page on the next one with all. If they the, put all the variants. And between that Safari and the Harrier and the next one, it means. <laughs> so Tata should sponsor those <laughs> <laughs> car bike prices pages. Five pages just because of all the personas. So anyway, yeah. cutting that out. Evo, we don't have the car and bike prices pages. Number one, because no matter how much effort you put into it, there will be some mistake or the other. <laughs> because it's only the interns that get to do those pages or yeah. are forced to do those pages. Yeah. And for us, we rather give you 16 more pages of uh, you know. a great Features. car on a great road rather 100%. than um give you all the data which is obviously there in autocar and also it's there on all the websites that you can find so anyway yeah back to the next one back to the next one uh still a benchmark in one of the hottest segments in the country today so i think if it was being able to considered for icot it would have been a a really strong contender yeah but it is the same platform it yeah. is a facelift and that's why it is a facelift yeah. and that's why it's not there 100%. in the icot and then let's stick with tata motors yeah. okay obviously safari harrier the timeline safari and harrier mm-hmm. now that again styling big update big update. obviously in profile it looks the same because these are facelifts yes. these are not like all new model changes but the front end has been reworked and now they've injected some differentiation between the safari and the harrier yeah. made it look slightly different yeah. i am not a fan of the fact that both have got those light bars the full width <laughs> light bar it's okay i'll let it be I think that should be kept for the EVs. It's fine. Like what that is doing it right with the Nexon. Yeah, yeah. So the Nexon combustion and the Nexon uh, EV. Yeah, that makes no sense. Doing it illogically makes no sense. Yeah. So But the Nexon EV has yeah. a full light bar. The combustion does not have it. The Harrier EV will come. Yeah. So then how do that you? That won't have a light bar. You see. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I honestly, even the Verna, the my main yeah. criticism with the Verna was that full width light bar. Keep that for EVs, man. Leave But it. But there's no rules there. Let it be. It's okay. There should be rules. That's what <laughs> we should have a rules-based order. Done, done. <laughs> yeah, the authoritarian and serious order. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rules-based. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. forget about the styling, which looks actually really good. The interiors, huge step up. Mm-hmm. 
we always criticize the harrier and the safari for yeah. that small little infotainment screen and with at least with my chubby fingers every time you pressed one button something else would get pressed yeah. and, and the carpet didn't videos. take up the full screen exactly but yeah. now this is sorted out yeah. my only comment on that is that uh, with carplay connected you can't show your google maps on the center console mm. whereas with android auto your google maps also shows on the digital cluster but that's like i told you it's a global thing I, even it's, the even porsche can't figure it out yeah so if porsche <laughs> can't figure it out well all is forgiven but the thing is it's not the car makers problem yeah. it's google and apple doing their little yeah. tiff so, so i'm so sure in an update that will be sorted out hopefully but i think yeah. tata motors have done a damn fine job with the interior yeah, yeah 100% okay, the same criticism that we have with all cars that have the piano black and all that all those smudges and yeah. the fingerprint marks but that's there with every merc and bmw and the same with tata motors Are so but it's not yeah. it's not endemic only to yeah. them some of the buttons are too small it could have been done yeah. a little better but otherwise i think sorted out thrill of driving's eps that's the biggest talking point biggest talking point yeah. so Normally you would think hydraulic power steering is the be all and yeah. end all but with the hydraulic power steering on both the Safari and Harrier you had that strange kickback you had that strange weighting yeah. at times it would feel too heavy at times it would feel too light that reactiveness of too, center yeah and it was yeah. too sharp yeah. too direct so when you're driving fast on the highway making lane change maneuvers you had to really concentrate because the steering was a little hyper yeah. and hypersensitive now with e-pass all of that is sorted out so the much, electric much, power much steering better. transforms the driving experience of both the harrier and yes. the safari you can now shove it into corners at serious speeds really lean on the front axle really push it to the absolute limit of front yeah. end grip and you will know what the front tires are doing with the hydraulic power steering you never knew yeah. what was going on it was very inconsistent it was always unis bees yeah. you were always like guesswork and it might go might not go and all that here you can really push it it transforms the driving experience makes it so much nicer so much better it is the steering that the safari and harrier always needed from the start but like yeah. i said again better late than yes, never 100%. it transforms it it is really great to drive and it brings it on par with its rivals yes we will do a harrier versus when we get the car creta and the safari versus yeah. the xuv 700 so atish has spoken to tata motors yeah. pr uh, if you are tata motors pr and if you're watching this uh, please send please, us a car uh, send us harrier <laughs> we want to do a comparison test yeah, yeah. but uh, something that drove us mad on that car was the automatic gearbox not so much the automatic but the paddles on the automatic it just didn't let you take manual control um, which i found really strange the whole point of giving paddles is to give us control but if you give us paddles and say not allowed not allowed not allowed that just robs uh, the uh, the fun out of it you yeah. know so atish drove the safari which had the automatic gearbox i drove the harrier and what drove me mad on the harrier was the steering wasn't aligned <laughs> now yeah, i know a lot of people and my friends at auto motors were very upset about it and all that now the reason that we put that up was it no i just could not believe that a media test car was given like that i i just could not believe it and yeah. we had to put it so that it would light a fire somewhere and going forward no customer cars would ever be delivered that way so we had to take a call and it wasn't done to diss anybody or to you no know, point flaws that's not how we operate and we have a simple thing that no we always want to be positive we always want to send out positive messages but when something is just not right and a misaligned steering wheel has nothing to do with the manufacturing process it has everything to do with the quality control process the quality control process was always the big problem area at tata motors still is and yeah, yeah well it has become much 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 better i started off in the times when there was the old safari when the indica came out you know i i saw what problems were there those days those problems are not there today yeah. every successive tana motors product is getting better and better but that quality control more attention has to be delivered over there because now the cars are excellent they really are excellent if i was looking for a five seater suv the harrier would be straight up near the top of my list no questions asked it'll be right at the top of my list so i don't want to have a second thought thinking that are is the quality going to be okay so that you know is just that that needs sorting out or not even sorting out just more attention just more focus over there and you know you can then recommend automotive products without thinking twice 
Hundred yeah. percent. So that's the only reason why we put that up. And there were a lot of negative comments over there. I think that's unwarranted, right? The only reason why we sent that out was to, you no, know, to force more thought and attention into quality control. And it is our firm belief that all this does make a difference. Like going back to the start of this podcast where we talked about the Verna and its five star rating. Because we yell and criticize so much that no, it doesn't have a crash safety rating. It doesn't have a crash safety rating. Now it does have a crash safety rating. So somebody is listening to us, and eventually that does make a difference. So uh, you know, always hoping. Yes. Right? And no malintent was intended. Definitely. What else? That's it. Oh, that's it for yeah. Indian cars. Okay. And since we have a little bit more time, we have eight ten minutes for the hour to get struck down. Uh, we'll talk about the green award. So the ICOT also has a green award, and this is for electric cars, yeah. for hybrid cars, for basically cars that have got better uh, fuel, fuel economy, economy and lower emissions. Yes. So we'll quickly run through them. Yep. Uh, BYD Atto Three. Nice. You don't see too many of them on the road. Yeah, and I'm not a fan of that musical interior that they have. It. It's slightly. Okay, but I think it's a strong candidate, but not enough on the road. I don't know if they have the dealer network hasn't grown, yeah. and more importantly, the government really <laughs> is not letting them invest. So yeah. I don't know what's going to happen about BYD. In fact, look at MG; they finally had to get investment from JSW, JSW. to finally put the capex into expanding the plant, getting more models in. So BYD is really going to get hampered on that front. So these are geopolitical things which are beyond our. The <laughs> understanding yeah. or what a purview. Let's put it that way. So let's leave it at that. BMW i7. Ah, oh, superb. The only thing going yeah. against it is the price, but in every respect, including that humongous lit grill, yeah. I love it. It's phenomenally comfortable. The electric drive train suits that luxury. The interiors. The have interiors been, are yeah. no. It's <laughs> unreal, man. It's uh, they this they stepped it up like. A couple of levels with this from this last seven series. They've to taken this a bat. Series. They've taken a ball and they've hit that ball into the ocean. Yeah, it's you know, too it's, good. They've knocked it out of the park. I love it. Hyundai Ionic Five. Excellent. We are actually using it. We yeah. have a long-term test Ionic Five, and I think it's great. It does not do sportiness, and it's not intended to do sportiness. And that's the differentiator between the EV6, which yeah. is the reigning green car of the year. It won the Green Award last year, and I think between the EV6 and the Ionic 5, the Ionic 5 is a little bit more comfortable. Mm-hmm. The design is more open in terms of the interiors. I'm talking about, so it feels a little bit more spacious on the inside, and the exterior styling, I love it. I think it's the best looking car we have today. I I think yeah. it's unbelievable what Hyundai can do. They have such a depth of resource in their yeah. styling studios. They can make the Ionic 5, and then they can make something like the Santa Fe. Which to me, the new Santa Fe, especially the rear, I think God, what's going on over there? And then something like an Aura also, huh? and something <laughs> like the Aura also. But they can do anything. Yeah. You tell them what, and they can do anything. That yeah. Ionic Five, I think, is great, Absolutely. and the range. You took yeah. it to Goa. I did. Uh, you were a little nervous, and that's why you stopped at Kara to top it up. Yeah, but, but I think I could have done Goa in one charge, easy. Yeah, Pune yeah. to Goa on one charge, and it cost next to nothing to run it. Yeah, yeah. So and Ionic Five, great. And the pricing also great because they are because assembling CKD. it yep. in India. Great pricing also for what it offers. XUV four double. Yeah, the Ionic five you can also send it sideways. Only rear wheel drive. <laughs> I did that. It's it's not recommended and it's stupid, but I yeah. did that. And you can power oversteer it. XUV four double. XUV four double. There are still a few areas that it lacks, uh, and I think it's more to do with the software and all that. A software update will sort out everything. More importantly. There is an update to the XUV 3W coming out, a facelift, which will sort out the fact that it's got a very small screen, all of those things which are aging, and that will really sort out the 4W. Mm. In terms of performance, actually very good in terms yeah. of performance, range again nothing to complain about, and because it's based on the 3W platform, it feels robust and like an SUV, and that prompted us to take the 4W to Sandapku, mm. again the highest road in the eastern Himalayas. An extremely, extremely tough four by four track. The land of Land Rovers. Mm. That's the first time we heard about it. Yeah. Not too many Land Rovers left over there. All those are gone. Collectors all over the country have gone and snapped up all those Land Rovers. What are left have running Mahindra engines. And now the Bolero is the yeah, it's the land of Boleros. Yeah. And Bolero pickups. The land of Land Rovers is become a land of Mahindras. But the XUV four double it tackled all of that. 
we i think 1 km before the top we had to turn around hmm. and the only reason was because the soil and the terrain become so loose that it was just digging in the tires weren't getting grip it's got low rolling resistance tires and yeah. whatever it's just that it had range it had the power it had the ground clearance it had the robustness it just did not have grip it lacked for tire traction if he had little bit more traction on the tire front you would have made it up but yeah. it's just that that it stopped it from going up there now we're back to the comet we've discussed already yep. the citroen ec3 that's another car with c3 in its name that i think citroen needs to push more yeah because that has, it has potential. more potential yeah. than the combustion engine today you have the nexon ev in that segment and the xuv400 which is spoken about but there aren't too many players it actually there. sits somewhere between the nexon ev and the tiago ev exactly yeah. it undercuts the nexon ev yeah. while offering almost same nexon ev space mm -hmm. obviously the c3 is more a punch rival yeah. but the c3 has got space and everything there yeah. is no e punch the punch.ev is going to come yeah. in 2024 There's no surprise on that front. Everybody knows about it. The punch might also come with the uh, CNG powertrain. So all that is coming up. Tata Motors has tons of cars coming. Yeah. But the the EC3 it has got sort of like a white space available to it. Citroen, I don't know why they're not making enough hay over there. I wish they'd done what Tata did with the uh, Tiago EV though and made the interiors more upmarket. Mm. Because for a lot of mm. people, these electric cars are their second cars mm. or their third cars, and they're used to more expensive stuff. Mm. You know, this is not going to be their first car buy where they they don't mind a little bit of cloth interiors mm. and hard plastics and stuff like that. So I think Tata did it right with mm. the Tiago EV by bumping up the spec a little bit on the car, and Citroen should have done that with the EC3 as yeah, well. That's a that's a very good point because. the C3 and the EC3 both feel too basic on yeah. the side yeah. and that's a big drawback otherwise the ride comfort is there handling well uh, we spoke about the C3 also yeah. tons of body roll and everything <laughs> so let's not even go over there Volvo C40 again very nice very yeah. nice to look at uh, in terms of the performance man yeah. that's a rocket yeah. you put your foot down and it's like oh it, it's like a it's the fastest volvo that they sell in yeah. india it's one of the fastest cars you can buy at what 50 60 lakh yeah, rupees yeah the price that's the clincher yeah. for that car you know it's such good value it's for performance it's a performance car yeah. it's a 50 lakh rupee performance yeah. car it, it's it vac it takes up the space that mustang vacated yes <laughs> so i think it's great yeah and uh, mercedes benz eqe Okay so we have done a comparison test it is there in the December issue of yeah. Evo India magazine which is on stands now uh, to blow the verdict the <laughs> EQV SUV just about won yeah. that test yeah. and the reason for that is that it really makes you feel good about yourself feel it's special got, it's especially in the night yeah. the interiors the way it is done up that hyper screen all that mood lighting uh, it looks like a nightclub mm. in there but i love it maybe i'm an 8 year old but i love it yeah you don't like the exterior styling i don't like the exterior styling i don't like the back seat it has its flaws but i, I think, think the exterior styling is yeah. okay it's again a matter of preference the q8 e-tron looks very cool but the both on the outside pack, yeah. but the inside it's too it's not bad but it's too audi it's it doesn't too push the boundaries it doesn't push the boundaries yeah. the ix i used it as a long termer for a month and a half i grew to really like it yeah it grows on you that car it grows sure. on you but uh, it doesn't have as much range and power as either of the two the yeah. eq is the fastest yeah by a mile by a mile the q8 e-tron has got slightly more range but the yeah. range is more or less there and overall that eq it sorts out the biggest problem with merc electric vehicles and that is the ground clearance <laughs> you have air suspensions so you can lift it up and the base ground clearance is also good yeah. enough for our road yeah and so i think that really works and it is the most expensive on paper But when you add up the options, yes. the EQV SUV is the most value for money. Yeah, I, I thought yeah. that was. Uh, I always thought that Mercedes now because they're the best selling in the country, best selling luxury brand in the yeah. country, they are pricing the cars at a premium because they can get away with yeah. it. Yeah, and they made no secrets about that also. Yeah, and they always say the that they yeah. do price premium. Yeah. But uh, you add up the options, yeah. and this is not the most expensive. This is the most value for money. Yeah, surprisingly. So well, Mercedes, well done. The yeah. EQV SUV, I think, is great. Okay, so that's it. Car of the year, green car of the year. We've covered every single contender that there was over the last year. But before we end, Sirish, you wanted to say something about Icot? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, warning: this is going to be a rant. Now, when I put up the social content on the 
contenders for the ICOT at our jury round at the BIC. There were a lot of comments saying, obviously, Exeter is going to win it, Hyundai is going to win it. And I think that is uncalled for. Now, Hyundai have won the ICOT the most number of times, but that's because they made excellent cars. Not for nothing is Hyundai the best selling, second best selling automotive manufacturer in the country. If they made bad cars, would they be the second best selling? No. Mm. They made good cars. That's why they won the ICOT plenty of times. Now, you cannot influence the ICOT for the very fact that it has, I think, eight or nine publications. The jury is now almost 30 people. Imagine a car PR. Suppose now you were ex-manufacturer PR. You would go to eight publications. You would go to 30 or 35 journalists and you would sway each and every one of them. I think that's giving PR uh, more credit than it actually deserves. PR plays a big role. And I'll admit it that everybody calls and everybody asks, Kon jeet rahe, Kon jeet rahe, and I, that is curiosity. The fact is that we do not know. Earlier, we used to have Grant Thornton. Now we have Deloitte. They audit the results. So yeah. we're at the jury round, we all fill in our sheets, give it to the Deloitte guys. And at the presentation, so this year is going to happen at the Geo World Center in BKC. At the presentation, the envelope is open and that's when we know what has won? You, should see, honestly, the f- you should see the face of the jury when things are announced. Exactly. Because we also, we're getting that information for the first time. Yeah, Hand yeah. on heart, we do not yeah. know. And we like it this way. Because then, when anybody asks, I can honestly say that <laughs> I don't know. So, please come for the ceremony. Yeah. And you will know at the same time that we do. Also, the jury brings such diverse bits of opinion yeah. Like we focus on performance, we focus on thrill of driving, we focus on no no boring cars, we want fun cars. Others will probably focus on fuel efficiency, others will focus on pricing, others will talk about the India relevance to it. So it brings in this diversity of opinion, which I probably won't, uh, like the car of the year would probably not be my personal car of the year, but that's the beauty of the IQT because yeah. it's democratic. It brings everybody's opinions into it puts it into the basket, you vote for it, you put your points down, and then the best car wins. You cannot influence the IQT. You cannot go to each journalist and say, yaar, merko dena, please merko dena. It does not happen that way. So everybody who's been talking about it, and there have been videos that have been put out about the IQT being this and IQT being that and people rambling about this and that. It does not make sense. That's just sour grapes. If you want to be part of the IQT, be part of the IQT, right? You want to make a difference, make a change on the inside. People who are on the IQT, guys like, say, Aspi, Yogendra, myself, Bertie, we've all been on this ever since the start. We've got like, you know, combined, I think we've got some 100 years of experience. Something they said. No, much more. Yeah. It can't be just 100. I got 24 years of experience doing yeah. this. Same with Aspi, same with Yogendra, same with Bertie. Uh, Bob has some 30 something. Bob has got maybe 35 <laughs> years of experience, right? So all of us, you no, know, we've got a massive amount of experience and we would not be where we are yeah. by being monkeys. We would not be where we are by getting swayed by one manufacturer or another manufacturer. That will probably help you one year or two years. After that, everybody knows that, no, you are an idiot. And uh, today, one manufacturer tells you something and you'll do that. It does not work that way, man. So get your heads out of the mud pit and see it for what it is. That it is the most credible automotive award. It's an award that cannot be influenced. Because what are they going to influence? What are they going to do? There is no one single magazine, right? Yeah. You just cannot do it. It's not possible. So I'm telling you, hand on heart, you know, people come and obviously they tell us, see, hey, we made the best car and hey, we made the best bike. And we say, hey, yeah, you made a great car. But eventually, okay, we will vote for who we want to because A, it is, no, nobody knows what the votes are. So there's no question of X manufacturer coming and telling me, oh, you only gave me two points, you didn't give me five points and all that. Nobody knows. So we can be completely transparent. We can put down, I don't know what Atish voted for. Atish does not know what I voted for. So it's not like Evo has got two votes and Evo (laughs) is going to swing it in favor of somebody. It's not, it's just not that. So honestly, it is unbiased. And we're going to put this podcast out on the 19th, 20th evening. The IQT is going to be announced. I think we also live stream it. Yes. Okay. So, So it's also live streamed. So, Watch out for the reactions of the jury members. All the jury members are going to be on the stage. When they open the envelope, you'll see a lot of jury members looking at each other and like, oh, all right. (laughs) Because again... Not everybody voted for the same car. Yeah, Yeah. it's not possible. Not everybody voted for the same car. So it's a surprise for everybody. 
Uh, stay tuned for that. 20th yeah. in the evening, I think around 9 o'clock, that's when it'll be announced. Obviously, it'll be on our social media. So have a look at that. Rant over. Thank you for listening and watching our year-ending podcast. We are going to do another one on the IQT. We're yeah. going to get diverse set of voices to talk about the IQT. People who've been on the jury, people on the manufacturer side, general people like you guys. So if you want to send in your opinions on the IQT, drop it in the comments with your number or your social handle and we will get back to you and we will do another podcast on the IQT. And uh, I'm going to jump out of the seat Karan is going to jump in here and Adish and Karan are going to do another one on the best IMOT. motorcycles yeah. that have been launched this year. And unlike the IMOT, we're also going to talk about the scooters. Yes. So we're going to talk about the best two-wheelers that have been launched this year, including the electrics and all of that. Yeah. So watch out for that. We're going to drop that podcast also in 2023. And in 2024, Adish promises that uh, we will have more podcasts yes, on the 100%. Evo that I promise channel, you. Right? Yeah. Uh, we also have another podcast with Ashish Raurane on the Dakar. So that's also yeah. coming up. That has been <laughs> filmed and shot. So yeah. I can now go on holiday. So anyway, thank you guys for listening and watching. Happy holidays. It's the end of the year. Time to get recharged. And uh, yeah, which is your standout car of the year? Let us know in the comments. Thank you guys for listening. See you all next time.